So welcome again to our uh, weekly series of webinars and designed to educate you about a variety of market concepts, inform you of features and tools that Bar Chart provides related to these concepts, and finally, hopefully, I'll give you some traders' insight to help you make more informed investment decisions. So today's su subject matter is commodity bull markets and how to trade them. So you don't have to go very far than your local grocery store to see that the prices of basic commodities have risen double digits in the last few months. Notice here on our three months futures performance page, uh, we've got soybeans, butter, uh, bacon, uh, orange juice, milk, uh, coffee, all of them have had double digit gains. And just going to the gas pump, you can see that gasoline prices are at five year highs and the price of gasoline futures has risen nearly 500% since March of 2020. So what's behind uh, these historical rises? Even on our uh, front page today, notice that we have many stories about commodity markets, Russia and wheat and inflation and weather, uh, cotton markets, hog markets, soy markets. So there's a lot of uh, news in the market right now about all these commodities. So does bar chart have any tools that will help me identify some of these longer term trends? And are there still some opportunities out there? And so welcome everybody again. I apologize. My name is John Rowland, bar charts head of trading. And hopefully today uh, we'll break down some of these longer term trends, these commodity trends, and we'll look at bar charts futures trading guide see if we can discover some ways to find uh, trading opportunities in these markets. So before we get started again, I want to apologize, welcome you all, um, and also welcome my partner and our uh, moderator, Gene. So Gene, just say hi, make sure we're all good to go. Are we good? I think so, John, we're good to go. Okay, Thanks again great. for every, so, everybody. Yeah, thanks again, everybody, for sticking with us. Let's let's get going. Uh, all right, awesome, great. Just a reminder that today's session is for um, educational purposes only, and that trading uh, or buying, sell, or hold or trading in securities, commodities, or other investments involves risk and invest made in advice of qualified financial professionals. We're going to be talking about futures today. Futures trading is not for everyone. Uh, you can lose more than your principal in futures trading, and then under no circumstances shall we be liable for any loss or damage you or anyone else incurs as a result of trading or investment activity that you or anyone else engages in based on information or material that you receive through bar chart, bar chart or our services. Okay. So if I look at uh, long term, I'm in the futures section, and I'm under the long term trends. You can see that. We have a variety of different commodities, uh, you know, not just one sector of commodities, but we have a variety of commodities. We have oats, natural gas, coffee, canola, gasoline, and all down the line. So a large swath of commodities are having uh, huge uh, price movements um, over the last year. This is a weighted alpha over the past last year. So if we look at something called a basket of commodities. There's something called the uh, Standard & Poor's Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, and this is a 20-year chart. So what this represents is a composite of all the commodities. Now, the Goldman Sachs uh, Commodity Index is weighted more heavily towards um, energy markets, uh, energy commodities, uh, about 54%. Uh, grains represent 15%. Livestock, 8%. Uh, softs, uh, 4%. Softs would be like coffee, cocoa, and sugar. So agricultures make up about 27% of this index. And then we have metals, industrial metals like aluminum, nickel, lead, 
and uh, zinc uh, make up about 12% of this uh, index, and precious metals are gold, silver, and copper make up uh, 7%. So metals make up about 19% of this index. So you can see that currently uh, we are in a 22-month uh, trend. This is a monthly chart. And if you compare that to recent historical mega trends or longer term trends, uh, we can go back in time. We can see there was one of 34 months, uh, 27 months, uh, and 64 months, which goes all the way back to uh, 2003, 2008. But you can see that we are nearing a technical of potential resistance um, over here on the left under this arrow. So we are in this mega trend, but we might be getting closer uh, to maybe some near-term resistance. Now, I did say that this particular index is energy weighted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into crude oil. And as this loads, what we're going to be looking at here is a 20-year chart, monthly chart, of crude oil. And what we can see here is there's a lot of similarities between the crude oil chart and a Goldman Sachs index chart. Very similar looking charts. And that's because this Goldman Sachs index, here it is again, is heavily weighted towards energies. But if we talk about crude oil itself, you can see that we are in this nice uptrend and where it looks like we're heading towards this kind of self-fulfilling prophecy that you've been hearing uh, in the news of $100 crude. So at this point, I think the market wants to test near $100. But as we reach $100 in, uh, in the WTI contract, I'm wondering if we might not see some uh, demand erosion. In other words, a change in uh, maybe consumer uh, habits. I know uh, from my own personal driving habits, you know, I'm not driving around as much as I was. You know, I just kind of plan out my day to make sure that I don't spend a lot of time driving around previously. So I'm wondering as, as we move forward uh, in the next few months, and we, as we reach this self-fulfilling prophecy of $100, if that we might see crude oil prices back off. But it's in, in the midterm, we definitely are in a nice uptrend. So what I want to do is I want to introduce you to a feature. This is a premium feature that we have on in Bar Chart. It's called the Futures Trading Guide. And I'm going to start in the historical uh, performance first, and we'll look at the trading guide in a second. And what this is is a hypothetical trading system using the nine and eighteen day moving average. Now it generates buy and sell signals when the nine crosses from below or from above a sell signal, um, the eighteen day moving average. And you can see that currently for the crude oil, we have a buy signal, and the current profits for that buy signal is generating about $15,000, $16,000. In the last year, we've had 12 uh, signals uh, coming from the futures trading guide, and each of those signals has averaged about 30 days. If I go to the view details. Now what this does is I'm going to go directly now to the trading guide for crude oil and you can see uh, the different buy and sell signals over the last year. So you can see it currently we're in a buy signal that was generated back on uh, December 16th and we're still in this trade. So the starting date was December 16th. The entry price was 71.75. Uh, the price movement we've captured is $15.89. Again, the current profit is 15890 
And we've been in this trade now for 48 days. My next two, strength and direction, is telling us basically what is the condition of our trend. The strength is average. In other words, it's a good trend, but it's not a great trend right now. And direction is really kind of giving us a snapshot of current momentum. And the current momentum for this one is the weakest, which could be a sign that this trend is about to change or at least uh, a slow down. The momentum has slowed now. So I want to go and drag this down here for a second. And over here, we have our one-year trading performance history. And we can look at all the trades that have occurred in the buy signal for, or buy and sell signal uh, for the WTI. And one of the benefits of being a futures trader is that this system is going to give us both buy going long signals, but also give us sell going short signals. And you can see as it generates profit from both sides, uh, long and short uh, positions. Now, when we talk about the futures trading guide, each one of these new signals actually generates two actions. So if I'm currently in a long position and then the future trading guide gives me a sell signal, that sell signal is telling me to exit the long position and then enter on a new short position. So the future trading guide is always in the mark in the market. See they're always long or always short. But what I want to point out here is that when reviewing these uh, trades, I want you to notice that the longer the duration is generating some nicer profit, uh, 48 days, 20, 42 days, 64 days. These ones were very profitable trades. The ones of shorter durations usually are the ones where we get a switch in signal, and, and typically you might see a small loss. If I go back to my trading guide, again, let's look at what has happened. Here is a buy signal, and the trend continued. Then we generated a sell signal, which would be to exit this buy signal, but also an opportunity to go short. Uh, and then we generated a buy signal, which would be to cover our short position and then go long and catch this new trend. So this brings us back to our mega trend concept that we were kind of looking at. And from a risk management perspective, if I'm in a long-term trend, in this case, we're looking at crude oil, a long-term uptrend, what I might look for is the buy signal for entries and respect the sell signal as an exit. And then what I might do is wait for a new buy signal to re-enter the market. So buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy. Because I want to play this longer term trend. Now I understand that for many of you, futures trading is not your cup of tea. And that's fine, and I understand that. But before I move away from this page, I do want to make note of the last three signals. First one here, this last buy signal on December 16th, this sell signal on November 4th, and this buy signal on September 1st. I'm going to go up into the crude oil price over page. And I'm going to drag this down. And I want you to notice that over here we have what is called the related ETFs. And so what we can do here is we can use the futures trading guide to give us guidance on executing trades in ETFs. That way I can avoid trading futures markets. So the one that most of you might be familiar with would be the USO. 
the U.S. Oil Fund, which represents the ETF. And if I open up a chart of that, and remember those three dates, let's look at the first date, our September 1st. That was when we generated a new buy signal. And if I bought the USO, the ETF, on the same day the futures trading guy generated that buy signal and waited until it generated that sell signal, that exit signal, uh, you can see that we would have been in this trade for about 46 days and uh, would have captured about 14.5% uh, movement. Nice little trade there. No, I'm not going to sell short the ETF. That's not something that maybe I would be interested in doing if I'm more of a conservative trader. But now I'm waiting for that new buy signal, which happens on December 16th. And currently we're in this trade now for about 33 days and we're up about 20%. So here's a way how we can use the futures trading guide to give us buy and sell signals in these relatable ETFs. So I'm going to go back to the futures trading guide. And remember we were talking about the Goldman Sachs index. And there's three major components, energies, uh, agricultures, and metals. And if we look here right on the top of the futures trading guide, Commodity over pay, overview page. Uh, here we are in grains, and currently all the grains are in a buy signal, meaning that they're in a buy trend. I do want you to notice, though, this one here highlighted the soybean meal in the bold numbers represents a today was a new buy signal for soybean meal. But we can see through these different uh, grains, we get kind of a mix, some re mixed results of our current profit. But there are two that are standing out. And these two are soybeans and soybean oil. So I'm opening the page for the soybean market. And just right here on the front page, the news commentary, I do see a noticing that today it says that the USDA reported that a record number of soybeans were crushed in December. In other words, they converted soybeans into soybean oil and soybean meal. So let's talk about soybeans uh, for a moment. Now, according to a recent CME report, the thirst for green energy on a global demand level will increase threefolds from the current levels by 2030. Now, in the same report, it says that in 2019, that the U.S. soybean oil accounted for about 35% of U.S. biodiesel consumption. And analysts are estimating that there could be a doubling of this demand in the next 12 months. Now, what could be the spike in this demand? Well, the state of California has enacted something called the Low Carbon Fuel Standard. And in order to meet that standard, today's demand from California is two times the current domestic production of renewable biodiesels. So this is creating a major impact on the soybean market. So here we're looking at a two-year chart. This is a daily chart of soybeans. And we got a nice little trend from last year that we topped out a little bit above $16. And then between the middle of last year to the end of last year, uh, we had a nice little bottom here, nice technical bottom. If those of you who are technical traders, uh, chart analysts, it looks like an inverted head and shoulders, nice little rounded bottom. And we broke out of uh, 
near-term resistance that was created last year, this little triple top pink area, and now prices are above that and it looks like we're about to test the uh, high from last year. If I go into my drawing tools, and I'm going to use the Fibonacci extension, and I'm going to measure this last move from last year to this correction. And I look at the extension on this move. You can see that our first extension just comes back to our uh, high from last year. But if I look at 100% uh, on this previous move, that could project as close to $19.50 per bushel. And if I look at it, a, a plus extension, now that projects up to around $21.50 uh, a bushel. Now, what makes me make this bold prediction of what if this trend is going to continue with soybeans? Well, let me change this chart to corn. And let's talk about what happened in corn a little bit more than a decade ago. Again, this is a 20-year chart, and we're looking at monthly statistics. And back in 2005, something called the Energy Policy Act was enacted. It was part of the Energy Independence Act. And inside of that, there was, a talk, there was an act called the Renewable Fuel Standard Act. And this was the beginning of the ethanol market. In other words, uh, entering ethanol into our gasoline. And you can see here in corn that corn had a substantial movement as it was rebalancing this new demand for corn to turn it into ethanol. And this trend lasted for 31 months, and it only ended because of the financial crisis of 2008. But what I was looking at this chart is, notice that first we got the initial movements as the acts were being uh, enacted, so to speak, and then we had the correction, and then the big uh, movement. And I thought this looks very similar to what we're seeing in our soybean chart. And that maybe uh, because of this large demand for soybeans, that soybean prices are going to continue to appreciate. Now, the main difference here between soybeans and corn uh, is that ethanol was a domestic market trend and biodiesel soybeans is a global mega trend phenomenon. And so there would, might be some greater potential in this uh, price movement. But as I also pointed out to you in the crude oil, maybe I don't want to trade Futures markets, soybeans might be too volatile for me. I go to my relatable ETFs. There is one that's called Soy B. So let me go back to my chart. I'm going to go to the compare. And I'm going to type in Soy B. And notice that the soy B follows almost identical uh, to the soybeans market. So here is an ETF that will give you the exposure to the soybean market without trading the soybeans futures contract. All right, so we looked at energies, we looked at agricultures, and the other part of our Goldman Sachs index was the uh, metals market.
So underneath the metals markets, we can see that for today, we actually have gotten three new signals. A signal to sell for gold, a signal to sell for silver, and a signal to sell for copper. Now remember, each new signal has two actions. This is a sell signal that tells us to get out of a long trade and a sell signal to enter to go short gold, silver, and copper. Now, gold is definitely one of the markets that everybody seems to be interested in these days. So let's take a look at gold. Again, here's our futures trading guide for gold. And you can kind of see that gold here for the last oh, year or so has kind of just been waffling back and forth. Uh, and we're getting a lot of mixed signals. We're not really getting a great trend analysis, you know, in and out of the market, in and out of the market. If I go to my chart for gold, let's look at what's happened over the last six months first. And I apologize. Was setting this up before. And again, you can see that gold here has kind of been in a sideways uh, ranging market, ranging movement, not really going up or down, just kind of bouncing back and forth. But we do see this overhead trend line that is keeping gold prices down, and we do see this supportive trend line below that is holding gold prices up. And it does look like there's kind of this uh, – $1,800 psychological value where gold is kind of just waffling back and forth. So we're kind of in this narrowing range. And this gold is looking like it's trying to build energy to break out of this range. Now, we have a sell signal in gold today. And that could mean that we could be breaking out of this range, but we're not there yet. So when we talk about gold, though, we need to talk about that gold does have an enemy, and that enemy is something called the dollar, the dollar index. And so as the dollar goes, there's an inverse relationship to metal markets, especially gold. And so what you can see here on this three-year weekly chart of the dollar, the dollar has been in an uptrend. And this is the backbone of our weekly three-year downtrend to gold, the inverse. So today we got a sell signal in gold. Now, I would be more inclined to believe that a sell signal in gold to go short if my dollar was rising. So here, let's look at this. This is gold here, and let's look at the last six days. So we have three little green candles that gold price is kind of moving up. But before that, we have three red candles where price of gold fell. Now remember, the sell signal that we got generated today is one, an exit from a previous long signal, which is probably came from over here. And that gave us, told us that this trend was over and it was time to exit the trade. But it also could be a sell signal. Now, again, I would be more inclined to take a sell signal if the dollar was rising. But if we look at what's going on in the dollar today, we see the dollar is actually falling. And look at the last three, six days. They're, the price action between gold and the dollar is opposite of each other. So here again, again, on a risk management basis, well, if I'm looking at the trends, I probably want to wait to see if gold is going to break out of that range and in this case i really would like to see the dollar go above this around 97 cents if gold prices go down and test 
the trend line below, that might be a signal for gold to give us a new buy signal as it breaks out of that wedge to the upside. If I go back to my price overview for gold, and I look at my relatable ETFs, now the most common one that we see here is the GLD. That is a very common uh, ETF that represents gold, but there are other ETFs in the gold market. So let me go to ETFs, and I'm going to click on popular ETFs. I'll scroll this down, and there is our commodity ETF. Some of them are our basket ETFs. Uh, some of them are uh, very specific, our gold, GLD, our silver. Our USO, natural gas one is another very popular uh, ETF, and then we have an agricultural one. And inside of um, our ETF scanner screener, you can actually really dial into a very specific um, ETF that is related to one of your futures contracts. Case in point, the soybean, which was for soybeans. So I want to give you kind of a little um, trader's advice here on this one, is not only when you look to try to find an ETF that is going to represent the futures contracts that you're going to take those signals from, but take the time to investigate what components or how that uh, ETF is put together. So first of all, this is the uh, Invesco. Uh, basket ETF similar to our Goldman Sachs ETF, uh, skill, excuse me, our Goldman Sachs index. Now, before we go and look and see how it's made up, I just want to show you that this mega trend that we've been talking about. Uh, so, since about November, this this particular uh, index is up about you know 17, almost 18 percent. Uh, it's been catching this uh, nice wave in all the commodities. Now down here where it says constituents, it's going to tell me the makeup of this uh, particular index fund. And you can see that this one is weighted heavily towards energies like we saw in the Goldman Sachs one. Uh, we have heating oil, Brent's, and crude oil, but it also has gold, aluminum, natural gas, Soybeans, corn, zinc, uh, copper, wheat, and, and sugar as part of this. So you get a nice basket here. Now, I'm not endorsing this one over any other one. I just wanted to show you that it's important for you to do your due diligence when you look at these ETFs to so make sure that if you're going to buy one of these baskets, uh, that the commodities that you want to be part of uh, are in that particular basket, right? So I just want to go back to our futures trading guide page. And one of the benefits for being a premier member is I can click this box up here and receive new trade emails. And what this is going to do for me is at the end of the day, it's going to send me an email that says, hey, by the way, today soybeans generated a buy signal or gold, silver, and copper uh, generated a sell signal. Now, although my background is in the futures market, I don't have a lot of time uh, to watch all the different futures markets. Uh, and, and I feel that as I've grown as a trader, I've become a lot more rounded in a trader. Now, that's not because I put on uh, 25 pounds because of COVID, uh, but it's because I spend more time looking at other opportunities. And so this daily e email uh, heads me up on 
top of what the futures markets are doing and allows me more time to focus on other market opportunities. But when I see one of those opportunities that relates to one of these mega trends that I want to be part of, the signal that came through our futures trading guy, and then I can be part of that trade. If I'm in one of these ETFs, I don't need to worry about uh, exiting my e ETF trade until I get that exit signal. So one of the nice benefits of this email is if I don't see an email for a long time, it's a pretty good sign that my trend is in, still in control. And what you will notice, though, um, is a lot of times you will not get a lot of signals. You may get one or two signals or maybe no signals at all for long periods of time, especially as these commodities are trending over these longer periods. And then all of a sudden you'll get uh, a lot of uh, new signals in a very short burst, maybe over three days, all the different sectors of the commodities world will roll over. And that usually happens when the dollar is making one of these uh, pivot highs or pivot lows, or the dollar is uh, breaking out of a range of price. And so there's a high correlation when that happens. But it's a nice benefit uh, to be able to get these emails to allow me to be a little bit more patient and waiting for those greater opportunities. All right, so I see a couple um, questions that have popped up, Gene. So let me read through the questions here. Anything in particular? And well, how are we well, doing in terms of? Yeah, while you while you read through the questions, uh, I just want to point out to everybody that. The futures trading guide that John has been showing you today is part of a bar chart premier subscription and we do offer a free 30 day trial. So it's to your advantage to take uh, a trial out and look at the futures trading guide, um, see what the new signals are and uh, learn from John's webinar today on how to best use it. Yeah, I was going to mention that at the end, but yeah, for sure, that's an opportunity for you guys to try to try this out, and I would really definitely recommend just doing the 30-day trial process and then, and using this to help enhance not only futures trading but all you know all of your trading. So I had a really couple of really good questions that I want to get to. So first of all, Rick asks, uh, he says, well, it's not really related to what we're talking about right now, but he says in 1978, Milton Friedman was talking about real inflation as the influx of money from government and I and uh, Rick I believe that inflation is a monetary uh, phenomenon so yes yeah, so we've had a decade of quantitative easing and what we're now seeing is that uh, liquidity is now uh, coming home to roost so yeah I really do believe that the only way um, for all these commodities are going to appreciate over the next couple of years until the, the Fed gets their act together and reigns in uh, inflation. Uh, Aaron asks, um, by the way, hey, Aaron, one of my regulars, uh, is there's the CRB, the Commodity Research Bureau Index. And yes, this, there are many of the different indexes out there, Aaron. Uh, this is definitely another one that you could look at. Uh, the difference between the CRB and the um, uh, GSCI is that one is a little bit more balanced. I think it goes something like 40% um, energy, 30% uh, agricultures, and 20% uh, metals. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but it's a little bit more balanced uh, than um, the Goldman Sachs one, okay? Uh, Michael asked something about uh, backwardation where, uh, in crude oil markets, and for those of you who are futures traders, uh, I would recommend a, a video. I'll, I'll show it to you in a second when we uh, finish up our session. But Michael, if crude oil moves from bank backwardation to contango. Just is telling us if we're in a tight or bullish and market, which we're kind of seeing right now. Uh, if we're in a bearish or oversupplied market, the market will tend to be in contango. Uh, So Danielle asks, uh, Daniel asks about copper. 
Uh, there's a lot of talk about there could be a major shortage in copper, and that is why they are recommending, I don't know who they are, but recommending investing in copper. But again, uh, uh, Daniel, uh, there is this mega trend that is being played out in a lot of our um, metals markets, not only just, uh, you know, gold we kind of seen in a, in, a, in a sideways action, but if you look at aluminum, you look at nickel um, and cobalt, uh, all these metals that are used in EV products, uh, copper, again, uh, these all have, have had some really strong movements, and there's a lot of uh, talk about that there's still not enough supply out there uh, to satisfy the demand for this new wave of green energy, not only uh, in the biofuel uh, sphere, as we just talked about with soybeans, but in the EV, electrical vehicle uh, sphere, uh, all of these uh, different uh, rare earth or base metals. So for sure, there should be some opportunity there. So Chris asks, if you're looking at trading equities, do you look at the futures contracts more heavily or the price action of the equities more directly? So again, Chris, I think it's more about looking at the mega trends that are being, or these longer period trends that are being created in the commodities market and seeing how they uh, play out in the equities market. I would probably be more concerned about a major change in trend in the commodities uh, spectrum than in the ETF. And that's what's kind of what's nice about uh, the hypothetical um, futures trading guide system. It allows you to be a lot more patient. You don't need to worry about all these uh, these micro movements on a day-to-day -day basis. We're just kind of trying to catch that longer period of time, uh, these longer period trends. And so he did talk about, Chris asked, can you look at copper and um, uh, FCX? And so I'm going to do another one, Chris. I'm just kind of what we, because I've been set up for uh, this. But if we go back to, let's say, soybeans, and we look at that chart. Right, we talked about that ETF, soy. But if we talk about an equity, for instance, ADM, which is Archer's Daniels Midland, this is the, the, um, one of the largest soybean crushers, right? Again, it, it's kind of mirroring the soybeans market. So all I would do is hang on to this position until I see a change in my soybean uh, market. I hope that answers that question, Chris. Let's do this. So I want to talk about some takeaways from today's session. So the first is that, you know, inflation does appear to be sticky. In other words, it's not going away. We're kind of in this, uh, we've seen this now for almost, you know, a year. Uh, and I think you could probably anticipate until the Fed gets interest, uh, inflation and interest rates under control, uh, that we will continue to see these mega trends uh, in commodities. Again, notice that when I showed you some of the examples, some of them lasted 20, 30, 40, 50 months. We're talking about multiple years, right? Uh, during inflationary cycles, commodities is usually outperforms the greater market. And a lot of times, uh, it's about the only place where you can find uh, some performances in the markets. And think about what has been happening in the market just recently. Uh, the commodity sector is one of the ones that has been outperforming. If I look at uh, these macro trends, again, in the commodity space, they last for multiple quarters, right? So I can be a lot more patient. I can let time... Uh, run and I can catch some of these really long-term trends. What's nice about the futures trading guide is it helps me catch these little movements inside of these mega trends, right? The futures trading guide picks up on these stronger trends and it produces these longer holding times. 
And as I showed you in that example with the crude oil historical, the longer I'm in the trade, the higher the probability I'm going to get a nice return. Now, you all know me, those of you who are regulars, I always talk about the caveats or the things to be aware of that could go wrong. And the, definitely the U.S. dollar has an inverse effect on commodity prices, especially metals, but to grains to a lesser extent as well. So be aware of what is going on in your dollar, U.S. dollar, as it is moving to new highs or new lows. And if we're looking at some of these longer term trends, we probably want to see the dollar either to be flat or to start trading lower. If the dollar starts gaining strength over the next couple of months, as our interest rates rise, as money comes in to uh, chase that return, that could stifle some of these, um, these trends. And then also I want you to be aware of that as commodity prices do get higher, they can lead to demand erosion. Think about the example with gasoline, how our behaviors might change if we have to start paying $5 a gallon for gasoline. And that could slow the advancement of some of these trends and maybe even uh, reverse some of these trends. All right, so as Jean pointed out before and what I always recommend at the end of our sessions is that Bar Chart Premier, uh, there's a 30-day uh, trial. Uh, you can come in and test out a lot of the cool advanced features that we have. And the one that we've been talking about today is the Futures Trading Guide. But you, there is also a way to be part of our family, just signing up for a basic membership. But again, Gene, remind me, those with the basic membership do not have access to the Futures Trading Guide. Is that correct? That's correct, John. Yeah. If So if you're uh, a free member, Try out Premier. You have nothing to lose, everything to gain. Gotcha. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully, you get some nice, nice big trends. Yeah, well, I just wanted to mention this that here is today's session, and later today, Gene will have the recording up. Though I don't, I don't know. Maybe Gene might not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Taking a snow day here. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was a snow day. It feels like a snow day. Uh, I did want to point out that here's that ET, uh, ETF webinar that we did a little bit uh, deeper into the weeds. Kind of the process that I was showing you how to look at ETFs and relate them to the futures market. But also there are two other um, webinars that go a lot more into depth. Uh, on about how to use the futures trading guide. Today we kind of just looked at mega trends. And these ones will be a little bit more uh, granular. Okay. So again, what Gene is asking me to show you is I'll go back to our webinars and that next week. Is it next week or the following week? We're it's off actually next week, aren't we? right. It's actually the following week. Right. But so it's our next February schedule. 16th. We're, we're off next week. We're going to talk about the commitment of traders report. Now, what is that? Well, this is a report that's put out by the Futures Trading Commission. It shows the open interest of participants in futures markets. And what we can use this uh, information is it helps provide us an insight to what our smart money is doing, which groups are participating or maybe driving some of our current trends. And this could lead to opportunities or actually kind of helping us to figure out uh, the strength of our trends, are they rising because of traders that are acquiring more contracts or is it, there's some uh, warning signs in some of these trends as uh, money moves in and out of the futures market. So yeah, come and uh, join us for that session. I think you'll really enjoy it, especially those of you who are futures traders. But again, um, I think it was, was it Daniel was asking, oh, excuse me, Michael was asking about backwardation. Uh, Michael, will in, inside of this uh, report, will kind of give you that clue uh, if your market is moving from uh, contango or backwardation. So come on and join that session. I think you will like that uh, session. 
All right. Anything else, Jean, I forgot? I feel kind of discombobulated today. You know what I mean? Well, thanks. Thanks for sticking with it. Thanks for a great session, John. I appreciate that, Jean, and I appreciate all you folks out there sticking with us today. Um, so be safe out there. I know the weather's really crummy across the Midwest. Uh, be safe. Uh, best of health and the good of all trading.